Thank you, Annalisa, and thank you, Women's Sphere, and uh, kudos to all of the incredible women leaders that are in this room. Women in the arts, the, the undervalued asset. I'd like to ask you who you think said this quote and when they said it. The woman artist is merely ridiculous, but I feel that it is acceptable for a woman to be a singer or a dancer. This was Auguste Renoir in 1888. Now, who do you think said this and when? Women simply don't pass the test. They don't paint very well, but you must know, I love women. This is Georges Baselitz, the great German contemporary artist, and he said this this year in 2013. <laughs> Have we really made this little progress in 120 years? Can this be true? Where are the women artists today? Let's go find them. What are the percentage of women artists in the museums? Let's look in the museums. Well, at the Tate Modern, on their own website, they show that 4% of the artists are women. And it's impressive that the Tate is so transparent because most museums do not publish this type of information on their websites. So let's go look in the city streets. Uh, the percentage of public art in central London by women is only 8%. Let's look for women artists in the auction house. No matter how you define top selling, uh, women are only in 0 to 3%. This is an incredible slide. So why is this happening in art? Well, I'd like to look at high technology because I'm based in Silicon Valley. And there we face, or high technology companies face, a very similar problem of having a lack of women at the top. But why is that happening in high tech? Well, it's a pipeline issue. Only one in five engineering graduates are women. So, oh, by the way, I'd like to also say that Jerry Saltz, the uh, critic from the New York, uh, New York Magazine, said that this whole dire situation is something that am amounts to apartheid. So, um, in tech, it's very much a pipeline issue. There's not enough uh, women graduating with engineering degrees. So what's the pipeline look like in the arts? Well, let's look at some top art schools. California College of the Arts is graduating 61% women. Rhode Island School of Design is graduating 68% women. Art Institute of Chicago is graduating 68.4% uh, women. So the pipeline looks pretty healthy, right? So is it that women are, are less creative than men, possibly? Well, let's look at another creative field of books and see what is the percentage of highest grossing authors that are women? Well, uh, it looks like it's about 30 percent, which is a lot better. Those are pretty good numbers. Why are the numbers for book sales so much better than the numbers for uh, art? Well, I think the gender bias for the book market reflects directly the preferences of millions of readers. And the gender bias for the art market reflects uh, the preferences of a very small art buying elite. So why is this art buying elite, why are their gender bias so, so sharp and so strong? Well, who are these art buyers? <laughs> many of them are the captains of finance and, and industry, and uh, many of them nowadays in their organizations day to day are facing a good deal of social pressure to include women on their boards and, and as their employees and in their executive group. Uh, and begrudgingly, uh, corporations are yielding little by little. But when it comes to the art market in their own private time, when they're spending their own hard-earned money, they have no such social pressure to include women. And quite possibly, the suppressed resentment that they have for being forced to you know, have affirmative action all day long, it might even push them more from wanting to invest in women in the arts. So Annalisa asked me to talk about why we should invest in the arts and why should we invest in women in the arts. Well, uh, Mayor Boris Johnson has been very eloquent talking about how a city's thriving artistic ecosystems are deeply interlinked with its economic vitality. Here in London alone, uh, over a thousand galleries and museums have contributed to the city attracting 
over 15 million international tourists. The creative industries in London uh, create 386,000 jobs and pull in 19 billion pounds for the economy. So uh, the arts make great economic sense. So if it makes sense for cities, and by the way, that holds for not only for London, but for Los Angeles, New York, Shanghai, Paris, any big city, if that is true. If it holds for cities that it's great, makes great sense to invest in the arts, what about for businesses or for individuals? And I say, absolutely. We say that we live in the knowledge economy, but actually it's the creative economy, where creativity is really rewarded in the marketplace. And uh, it gives your organization an incredible competitive advantage to, to stay close to art and to figure out ways of integrating art into your organization's processes. A great example from the UK is Charles Saatchi, uh, who has likely greatly benefited from his incredible art instincts and high profile art purchases. Art is part of the mythology of the Saatchi and Saatchi brand. And Charles Saatchi had the incredible ability to identify successful artists. That put him very uh, close to creativity in the mind of his clients and made the Saatchi and Saatchi pitch so much more compelling to his clients. So for Saatchi and Saatchi, art became an incredible branding, signaling, and communication tool. And the uh, same can be true for many other uh, organizations and companies, whether it's Deutsche Bank or the Cleveland Clinic, or businesses as uh, diverse as law firms, winemakers, and hedge funds. But why should we invest in women in the arts? Well, the first reason, I believe, is that right now we're only leveraging 50% of, of humanity's creative potential. And the second reason is that women are an untapped resource. And to put it in investment terms, art by women is an undervalued asset. And so from economics, we know that uh, an asset can only stay undervalued in the short run. And in the long run, it will go up and it will reach its fair value. So we remember the Medici's from, from, from the Renaissance and how they discovered so much great talent. And in the not too near future, an individual, a group of people, a company or a group of companies or organizations will go down in history as being the discoverers of the next great wave of women artists. And in the process, they will end up making a lot of money for themselves, which in this case is not such a bad thing. So thank you.